What's going on everyone? Welcome to Game Tangent, the community for super obsessed gaming nerds just like myself. My name is Chris Enriquez aka Hyper Neon and we got a super awesome episode for you today. We got E3 2018 is just around the corner. We've got about a month and some change to go uh, coming up on June 12th through the 14th. Super stoked for that. And so uh, being in the tradition of E3, I thought it was time that we give our uh, E3 2018 predictions. So joining me today to help us out with this, to give us some of his thoughts as well, is a good buddy of mine, friend of the show, uh, Casper, a man. Welcome to the show. Hey, what's up, guys? All right. So uh, what we're going to do here is we're going to kind of go through section by section. We're going to kind of give you guys uh, what we what we know so far and, you know, some like highly likely things that like pretty much aren't rumors, but, you know, some games that you just know are going to be there. Um, and then we're going to go into kind of each of the big three predictions. Uh, so we'll kind of, you know, divide it up into Xbox, Sony, Nintendo, and then we'll finish off with our general predictions from the show, which will just kind of be, you know, anything Bethesda, Ubisoft, EA, kind of those guys have their own conf you know, conferences and they'll have a bunch of stuff as well. Sound good, man? Sounds good. Let's do it. All right. Then without further ado, let's get into our E3 2018 predictions. All right, so the first thing we want to talk about today is everything that we know, or at least is very highly likely to be at the expo. Um, so we got kind of quite a big long list of games that are absolutely confirmed, um, and then some that are just super highly likely. Uh, so let's see, the, I think the first one that is pretty huge is going to be the new Super Smash Brothers. Um, I think that's pretty <laughs> safe yep. bet to say. Yep. My guess is that's going to be like the primary focus of Nintendo. Yeah. Um, so this year. honestly, I'm hoping that, I mean, that trailer was amazing, right? Uh, yeah. Because when I first saw it, I'm like, oh, another Splatoon game. Come on. They just came out the second one. And then you see it yeah. in his eye. I'm like, no way. Yeah. No way. And then sure enough, yeah. they're just all sitting there. So I'm really hoping Nintendo comes out of nowhere and does that. Right. A new foe has arrived and they start gameplay for the new Smash and that's what that's yeah. what i'm hoping for at least yeah yeah i i think so um i think that's a no-brainer that's probably going to be half their booth at at Nint you know at the, the be. show floor <laughs> yeah um the other another big one that's and again these are all games that are confirmed like we know uh the companies have already said that they are going to be there uh, so the other one that we know is going to be there is last of us part two uh super excited for that i loved the first one uh, i don't know if you yeah, the first one was amazing. Uh, yeah. I wanted to do a second playthrough, just never got time for it. But yeah, it was definitely a really good game. Agreed. Um, let's see. The next big one, which is a little bit of a surprise to me this early, actually, is The Division 2. Um, I, mean, I don't know I, if you played that. but no, I, I was on uh, the ship when that came out, so I didn't really have a chance to. And then I saw the reviews, and they're just horrendous. So yeah, I, they turned it around, apparently, but I still haven't right. taken the shot. Yeah, that's what I've heard about it as well. I uh, I played. I only ever played the beta, and um, you know I got in. It was all right. This you know this is obviously pre-launch. Uh, my friends have since gone back to it, and they've actually really been enjoying all of the updates. So I'm surprised that they they. I mean, I guess it's kind of a Destiny One situation where <laughs> Destiny One, Destiny Two, they, they they put all these updates in. They finally get the game to like, hey, people actually like our game now, and then. Oh, here's another one. Yeah. So I'm um, I'm surprised that they're not giving it a little bit more room to breathe, but maybe just not enough people jumped in because of the negative stigma in the beginning, and now they're just ready to push the next one. Yeah. I mean, I don't know. I feel like they should use the the Blizzard formula where they launch a game and there's just so much stigma, but they over time fix it, like um, Diablo three, for example. Right. I mean, yeah, Rainbow Six Siege was another one like that. Yep. That, Siege too. Um, yep. I, I think it Siege launched pretty well, actually. I don't think it really had much negative stigma, but I just don't think it was very popular. Yeah. And then just kind of slowly that game freaking took off, and now it's absolutely massive. Um, it's, it's, it's all about how you do your updates, streams. honestly. In yeah. my opinion, like if you if yeah. you give out your updates in like uh, currency or money, uh, I don't think it's gonna go too well. So yeah. Yep. Um, so another one uh, that's confirmed here is Beyond Good and Evil Two. So I've actually never played this game, but 
uh, last year when they showed the new trailer for it. It just looks so odd. Like, honestly, based on the name, the, the first game I just totally passed on because I didn't know, I, I had no idea what it was about. When they showed Beyond Good and Evil 2's trailer, just the, the tone and the action and the excitement of it, I was like, oh man, this game actually looks pretty cool. So I went and I, uh, I checked out some footage of the first game and I just was blown away because it was nothing like what I expected that game was. So I actually went and found it on sale, you know, for five bucks, and I picked it up, and I'm actually well, I'm now planning on playing a, a playthrough of it. Okay. Yeah I, yeah. I mean, I didn't know anything about the game until I saw the trailer for the second one, mm -hmm. and people started freaking out. Like, it was all over the internet. I was like, what is this game? Yeah. I, I have yet to still try it out. I want to, though, just because, I mean, if you have a fan base like that that goes crazy just seeing a second game, the first one's got to be good, you know? So. Yeah. It's, it's very Zelda-esque. I think in okay. its kind of gameplay uh, mechanics and but mi but more with a like a sci-fi uh, hint to it, which is pretty okay. cool. Uh, so the other one, which doesn't have a name yet, is uh, Battlefield 2018. Whatever that there's going to be a new Battlefield this this year. Uh, it's Shocker. confirmed that it's going to be shown off at <laughs> E3. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, so we'll see whatever that is. <laughs> it's going to be World War II. Calling it now. World War Two, I mean, it makes sense. They they freaking killed it with the first one. I mean, they so already hinted at it. Keep too. it going. So. Have they? Yeah. So the they, uh, I don't remember his name, but one of the guys, the lead uh, designers from the first one, he mm -hmm. said that because the first uh, World War One was so successful, that they are looking at World War Two as the next. Okay. Era, so. Yeah, I, I really liked uh, Battlefield One. Um, yeah. I played the crap out of it. I thought the the way they did the the vignettes, kind of in the the campaign, were really interesting. So I'm pretty excited to, to see what they do for the new one. Uh, and then obviously the multiplayer was just freaking phenomenal. It, right. it was huge for a really long time. I still jump back into it every once in a while. So yeah. that's, that's a good one. I really hope they do the, like you said, the like the different characters and the different fronts. I really want them to do that for the Western front and then the Pacific. That'd be a really mm -hmm. cool concept for them to try out. Yeah. Uh, so the last, there are more games that are confirmed, but the last one that kind of we're going to talk about, the big one here, is Anthem. Uh, so this freaking game, I am so excited for it. I'm so excited to learn more and see more about this game. Um, the the gameplay trailer that they showed off uh, E3 last year absolutely blew me away for a new IP. Um, it looked like some kind of blend between, uh, you know, Destiny, but just with way more fun movement mechanics. Uh, they're they're literally just flying around, jumping super high, running really fast. But then also all the, the you know the Bioware story elements, um, the facial animations were so good, and the the conversations they were having just seemed really well thought out. So I'm pretty excited for this one. Yeah, uh, I mean I'm I am excited as you are, but uh, Bioware and EA, those two yeah, th those two things true. I'm taking it with a grain of salt, especially yeah. with that E3 because everyone's always yep. pumped about it. So I'm really hoping it pulls through and right. EA doesn't mess with it too much, but I really hope Anthem is what it looks like because yeah. it looks amazing. Yeah, I agree with that. There's o there's always a chance they don't. <laughs> they, <laughs> they screw it all up. But honestly, I think this is this is a big one for them. I think they have to get the, It's already de been delayed once, which I think is for the best. I think they know they have to get this one right, especially after their failures with, too. Um, with Battlefront. Was, I think they, they've they realized that they just need to take a minute and really nail this one. Right. Um, because it has the, the potential to be you know, just a humongous success. People are very excited for it. They saw the fervor you know, by the press and by the, the community after their release. So take your time, get it right, and it's going to freaking sell like hotcakes. Yeah, I mean, they really need it. Like this, in my opinion, this is do or die for EA with me. Because if they can, yeah. if they can produce Anthem and make it the game that everyone wants it to be, yeah. okay, I'll I'll keep I'll keep giving you guys a chance. You know, I mean, they brought the loot boxes in Battlefield One was a little weird, but I mean, whatever, yeah. no big deal. But the way they did in Battlefront Two, and just that that was just a nightmare. So hopefully they'll pull through with Anthem. All right, let's see. Uh, so those are the, the all the games that have been confirmed. And then we got a few here that are just super highly likely, um, even though they haven't actually been technically confirmed as being at the show yet. 
so the first one is uh, Borderlands 3. This game has already been shown off um, at... It has, the game itself hasn't been shown off. Sorry, okay. they've, they've they've shown some tech demos at GDC and at PAX. Uh, they they actually showed a tech demo last year at PAX at the Gearbox panel, which was just t all in engine. They're like, "This is this new engine that we're working on," and uh, but we're not going to tell you what game it's for. And it's like, come on, everyone knows this freaking game is like it, it looked like borderlands it had the cell shading and it just you know the whole thing they even had characters from borderlands in it i was like get out of here we know what game <laughs> this is well they didn't put a title on it but it's time i that that was last year so it's been you know it'll be have been a year and a half since i saw that tech demo so it, it's it's about time and, and i think it's ready to well sh how long ago off. has pre-sequel come out that was um four? Pre uh, yeah. i'm not i'm not sure um I want to say that's 14. Maybe 15. Yeah, that sounds right. Like three or so, so years yeah, ago. It's about, it's about time there. for them to pump out a game then. Yeah. Yep. Okay. Yeah, so I think that's highly likely. Uh, Call of Duty, Black Ops 4, probably. Um, Did you hear what's going on with that, though? The, the no. rumor? So apparently, Black Ops 4 is just going to pump out just multiplayer only. Oh, I did hear about that. Yeah, so no single yeah. player. So that'll be that'll be interesting. Yeah, that's pretty much all I play Call of Duty for right now, just because I don't have time for single player. But yeah, I mean, we'll see. I mean, right. the fans aren't pretty happy about that. So, um, so uh, we're getting a little short on time here. So I'm gonna kind of just, I think, run through a bunch of these other ones uh, that we uh, I think are highly likely to be there. Uh, Crackdown three. It was there last year. It got delayed. It's supposed. It's Multiple coming out times. this year, 2018. Yeah, exactly. So I think th that's going to be there, um, in its new glory with all of its, you know, new polish. Xbox uh, One X power. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, Kingdom Hearts Three. Definitely going to be on the show floor. It's supposed to come out this year. Um, uh, Final Fantasy VII remake. I think we'll see something else from that. I think it's highly likely they'll show a little bit more of that. Um, Metroid Prime 4, Nintendo teased it last year. Um, Prime. You know, just with, yeah, <laughs> just just the logo. I think we're going to see, I think we'll see something else from that this year. Um, I think it'll be at the show. Uh, a new Pokemon game. Uh, Spider-Man, I think, is going to be there. Um, we, you know, we haven't seen, it hasn't been, we've seen a lot of it, but it hasn't actually been playable in any form for anybody yet. So I think this will be the first time that it's playable. What's kind of interesting, um, though, is that Zomniac picked this game up. The Ratchet and Clank guys? Yeah, yep. Kind well, of and the Sunset Overdrive guys. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Even, yep. So this is really interesting for them to pick up. I'm yeah. kind of curious as how they go with this. Uh, yeah, I've seen uh, a few demos. At, at e they had it at E3 last year, and I, and I saw a few demos of it, like behind closed doors type stuff. And, I mean, it, it even then, last year, it seemed like it played freaking phenomenally. So okay. um, I'm really excited to see where they where they go with it. Um, I love uh, Sunset Overdrive. It's it's one of my favorite games of this generation, actually. And Insomniac just knows how to nail movement. And I have uh, I have no doubts that they are going to crush this game. Um, I, I'm I'm so excited for this one. It's one of my most anticipated games of this year. I still have yet to play Sunset Overdrive, but oh, I started dude, it and I highly recommend the part it, where you yeah. got to the compensator. So. Yeah, <laughs> highly recommend it, man. Um, and then uh, the last, like I think, highly likely game is going to be Shadow of the Tomb Raider. Um, they've been they've been hitting that and teasing that. I yeah. think we'll, we'll see. I mean, more they they already announced it. I think they gave it a um, a release date too for September, October. Yeah, that sounds right. I'm um, just curious. It, if... it is this, yeah, this year. Yeah. Um, but I, I think they'll. I, I just mean I think it'll be there at the show. Right. Um, I'm just know, wondering if uh, one of the companies is going to grab uh, rights to it like they did with the last one with Microsoft. Uh, timed exclusive or right. something. Yeah, I'm not sure. Um, I think they've already announced the release date, so I think at that point they would have announced whether it was probably going to be timed exclusive uh, or that's not. That's true, yeah. Um, all right, so, just, so those are all the games that I think are conf either confirmed or extremely highly likely. Um, a few other kind of interesting things just about the show. Uh, so again, EA is not going to be at the show uh, on the expo floor. Um, they're going to be doing the EA play, uh, their own kind of conference that happens before the, the E3 convention. 
that takes place Saturday, uh, or it's like Friday through Monday or so. It's the weekend prior. Okay. Um, and that's open to the public. Uh, they did the same thing last year. You kind of go in, you get to try all their games. It coincides with their press conference usually. Um, uh, what else we got? Um, uh, Bethesda has confirmed they're doing another standalone conference this year. Um, so that's now their third, third or their fourth year maybe doing a standalone third or fourth year. I thought that was their second. Mm -mm, nope. Really? No, uh, yeah, it's it's either their third or their fourth. Okay, it might be third then. Yeah. Um, let's see what else we got. Because uh, the first year was the year with well, um, Fallout. Fallout 4. So it's, yeah. it's whatever year. And they've done one ever since. Fallout 4 release date was 2015. Is that right? Yeah, 2015. Okay, so yeah. So, we'll so yeah, so this will be their third year. Okay. Yep. Um, so let's see what else we got. Uh, um, yeah, so just uh, some interesting things I noticed. They released the, the, the floor plan has pretty much been leaked for this year. And um, so just some kind of interesting changes uh, that are actually I'm using to kind of help inform some of my predictions this year. Um, so actually uh, Xbox for the first year, they're actually taking their booth and basically moving it to the Microsoft theater. So they're still working in conjunction with the ESA. So they're still at E3. Um, and they actually have a small mixer booth inside the, the show floor, so but uh, their primary booth, they usually have a massive, massive booth at E3, right? But their primary booth this year is actually gonna be at the Microsoft, uh, what's it called? The mixer? No, 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 uh, just the Microsoft Center um, or something like that. What did I, um, the Microsoft Theater is what it's called. Um, and it's right, it's literally right next door at LA Live. So you just cross one street and you're there. Um, and that street is usually closed off so there's not even traffic or anything. You just have to like walk outside and then into their theater. And they're doing that to kind of consolidate all of their games, their press conference, everything all in one place. And it just gives them a lot more room to get more people in, you know, get more people trying their games and uh, more people into the press conference itself as well. Uh, so that's pretty interesting. Um, Epic for the first time is, I don't know if it's for the first time, but they actually have a really large booth this year. I noticed so, that. That's that's yeah. actually really curious because they don't have a lot of games to showcase. Like they used to own right. Gears of War, right. um, but they've definitely downsized or maybe upsized. I don't know with Fortnite. Uh, yeah. That's that's huge now, obviously. And then right. Paragon, maybe Paragon might go to Xbox. Maybe. Yeah, I'm. I'm not I'd sure, but I I think they're gonna have some uh, some big announcements for the future of Fortnite and. I think they have a big booth because they're going to get people freaking. They're going to try Fortnite and get people swag, amped up for. The, they're going to have. Well, they're going to have them. Whatever the new thing is, maybe have like a demo of it and, or it be playable. Um, I think it's going to be something maybe besides um, the you know, uh, Fortnite Battle Royale, like another competitive mode or something. Uh, I don't know. Okay. Pie in the sky. Little it's like a MOBA maybe. Bonus prediction. Bonus prediction there. <laughs> <laughs> um. Uh, Square Enix's booth has more than doubled in size. They've basically taken over the footprint of what Microsoft left behind. So they, it was always Microsoft and Square Enix right next to each other. And now that Microsoft is gone, Square Enix just took over their massive booth. So their booth is, I think it's more than double now, um, which just leads me to believe that like, you know, even though it's not confirmed, Kingdom Hearts 3 is gonna be there. That's like, yeah, you're gonna have or freaking Final Kingdom Fantasy Hearts 3. Yeah, yeah, they're gonna they're gonna have something freaking massive um, to to play a lot. I think just a lot of uh, hardware set up for pe to get people in and out. Um, and then uh, also the Bethesda booth, which is already huge. They're already a massive booth every year. It's almost doubled in size this year. So That's I think crazy. they got yeah. I think they got something really crazy to show off this year, um, one way or the other. Because they got they got a lot of room to get a lot of freaking uh, consoles and PCs and stuff in there to that's, get people. That's playing. one of my juicy predictions. Yeah. Juicy. All right. <laughs> All right. So um, I think that's everything that we know pretty positively that's going to be going on with E3. Um, 
the uh, just one last thing um, all just the live stream schedule for all the press conferences um, uh, EA is going to be Saturday June 9th um, at 11 a.m. Pacific time 2 p.m. Eastern time Microsoft Sunday June 10th 1 p.m. Pacific time 4 p.m. Eastern uh, Bethesda is going to also be on Sunday just after that or well, not just after but a little bit after that 6 30 p.m. Pacific 9 30 p.m. Eastern uh, Monday, June 11th will be Ubisoft. Uh, they're actually apparently like the only ones maybe going on Monday, which is odd. Uh, they're at 1 p.m. Pacific time, 4 p.m. Eastern. And then uh, Nintendo in their usual slot on Tuesday, June 12th, uh, 9 a.m. Pacific time, 12 p.m. Eastern. Uh, and they are actually, you know, they don't do an actual press conference. They're going to, it'll be their, their usual Nintendo Direct video. Um, so it won't be a live thing. It'll be a pre-recorded thing, but still tons and tons of surprises will be coming out of that, like always. Um, Sony is the only one that I, they, they have not announced what, I, I have here that it's it's supposed to happen on Tuesday, which would be a first, um, but I, I think it's just more that they just haven't announced anything yet. That's so, going to be that big. <laughs> Yeah, maybe. <laughs> um, really interesting. So I, I, so I don't, don't have a time or, or date yet for that one, which is surprising. So that's everything about E3 that we know so far. Um, if we missed anything or if there are other games that you guys know about, let us know. Hit us up in the comment section below and uh, give us uh, your kind of E3 facts. All right, welcome back, everyone. So... We're gonna be doing our Xbox predictions first to uh, kick things off here. And uh, so what we're gonna do is we each have uh, three, of, we have a lot more predictions, but we each have three of our uh, our top predictions that we're gonna kind of give you. Um, and then one wild prediction. Uh, just pie in the sky, if we could have anything, what do we want? And um, if, uh, you know, I don't, I don't, I don't know Casper's predictions. He doesn't know mine. But uh, if we have any overlap, I think we each kind of have like a, maybe you know one or two extras. So hopefully, we can kind of keep it even on either side. All right. Um, all right. So, Casper, do you want to kick us off with your first prediction? Oh, do I ever! All right. So, <laughs> I was just playing this before we get on here. Pray, right? Okay. The year is they announced, uh, or not really announced, but they hinted at DLC. Or an expansion for it. I don't know if you played Prey. Have you? Oh yeah, man. One of my favorite games of last year. The reason why I love it so much is because it reminds me of my favorite game of all time, and that's Bioshock. Okay. See where I'm going with this? I Bioshock so. Four. Okay. It uh, was so. It's not related to Prey. It's no. related to Bioshock. Okay. <laughs> so Prey reminds me a lot about Bioshock. <clears throat> all right. Um, yeah, I'm a little big daddy here. You know. Yeah always with me at all times with my little sister um so bioshock 4 casually got dropped in a kotaku um article like mm -hmm. they're talking i forget what game they were talking about but like oh yeah they just went across the street to go work on the new bioshock game i was like oh okay so i'm really <laughs> hoping xbox will drop a trailer for bioshock 4 or just a bioshock reboot in general okay. um just because yeah, it originally awesome. it originally came out on the 360 as an exclusive back mm -hmm. in 2007 or 8 yeah so. so do you think it's exclusive or do you think it'll just be shown off on their stage yeah i think like, i don't think it'll be exclusive at all okay i just think xbox will be like yeah we had it first you know look at yeah. us you know right gotcha just kind of get that brand alignment right cool yeah i could see that that would be, that would be freaking awesome yeah. I'm, I'm down for another bioshock game i'm so ready do you think it's uh, a kind of because I spoilers a little bit? I think that you know Infinite kind of brought the the story kind of like full circle and kind of closed off some Infinite stuff. Infinite amount of possibilities. Sure, but do you, th <laughs> <laughs> do you think that uh, this will be uh, like a reboot or something? You know, like a, just kind of a new take on Bioshock or in the same world? Yes. <laughs> uh <laughs> like i don't even know just because it's the writing style from the bioshock games are so like crazy and out there like you could pay attention right. the entire time and you still don't know what's going on like yeah that's exactly how infinite was for me because i already played bioshock one and two yeah. so i was waiting for infinite i was like all right i'm gonna i'm gonna figure it out before it happens and then sure enough they still got me 
So who knows where they're going to go with this one, you know? Yeah. All right. So uh, my first big Xbox prediction is uh, I think this is the year we find out more about Xbox VR. Um, yeah. Yeah. I, yeah. yeah. Is that one of yours? <laughs> <laughs> that one's off the table. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I kind of figured that would be one that we would both probably have because, you know, when they when they originally brought out the, um, you know, when they originally announced the Xbox Scorpio uh, two years ago in 2016, yep. they, um, you know, they, they mentioned, oh, it's going to be powerful enough for VR. It's going to have VR, all this stuff. And 2017, they didn't, they just didn't talk about they VR. They didn't say um, anything in 2017 at all right exactly they said hey it's definitely powerful enough to you know to play vr vr you know will be coming basically phil spencer has just said hey i just don't think the space is quite right yet for us we don't have a lot of people that are asking us about vr um so you know you know the power is there and you know we'll have more information at a later time basically um i, I think now's the time you know the vr starting the to take out a little time. bit more the best yeah, time, honestly yeah they've got uh, a, a few new um uh, there's, there's some wireless stuff starting to happen yep. in the VR space, which Phil Spencer has made very clear that he doesn't want to have cables uh, cluttering up the floor because he doesn't think that works in the living room experience. So I, I think I think this is going to be the time for VR. What do you think? Uh, 100% because one, that was my prediction. Yeah. <laughs> uh, two, I mean, I have my own Vive set up right now, but uh, Vive is recently, I don't know if they announced it yet or hinted at it, but they mm -hmm. just did a major price cut on the Vive already they are definitely pushing for wireless. So everything fits yeah. the table. And I remember uh, 2016, they were showcasing Minecraft and with the VR and you could like see the world and like zoom in and out, it was crazy. So was, was that the HoloLens demo or was that a VR demo? Uh, HoloLens. But HoloLens, yeah. yeah. Yeah, so Microsoft has made it very clear that their strategy is around uh, AR. So bringing up right. HoloLens is a good point. So, um, you know, I, I don't think I don't think this announcement will cater around Holo, anything HoloLens yet, just because I, I just think that that technology is too expensive for, um, you know, and too immature right now for the everyday Average gamer. Game, yeah. yeah, exactly. But so I don't think they'll make a big push for that just yet. But I, my prediction is actually that their VR strategy is going to be bring your own VR, that they'll just kind of create a platform similar to how Steam works now, where it just tells you, hey, here's all the games. If you have this headset, these are the games that are available to you, or these are the features that will and will not work. And basically um, they act as like a middleware where the game developers, um, you know, they, they say, hey, I wanna get this information from whatever VR headset you have. Um, and so, you know, they interact with the middle layer and then the middle layer actually, the middleware interacts with your actual v VR headset. Right. Okay. And that allows, if you have an Oculus, use your Oculus. You have a Vive, use your Vive. Um, cause they, they also have a partnership with Oculus. They had that partnership a while ago where they right. bundled an Xbox one controller with every single, um, Oculus that was sold. They still do so, that, don't they? Uh, no, th th those bundles aren't out there anymore. Oh, I, I don't, I don't believe so. I, I, I was looking that up a, a little while ago and okay. some people were talking about how the Xbox controllers just kind of like suddenly started disappearing from bundles. So I, I don't know if that's a, um, a guarantee you can and find like older versions that still have them but i think the right. new ones now have like they've they've gone towards the touch you know the okay. oculus touch remotes now instead okay. yeah um so yeah so that's 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 my prediction on that i think we'll it'll be bring your own vr and i think it will be wireless uh you know they'll, they'll have some type of like wireless solution that maybe can even interface with multiple types of headsets um microsoft windows has basically they have all these like windows licensed headsets now like everyone has their own vr heads you got like asus has a headset dell has a headset all what? these companies yeah that, that was it that was an announcement they, they made uh earlier this year i think at gdc maybe um where they were talking about their uh um like the win not gdc it was uh um, i think it was at ces okay where microsoft kind of revealed their line of um license you know they said hey we're not going to make our own and so we're going to you know we're going to have these officially licensed windows headsets and that allows kind of everyone to get into the game and so yeah if you go on their website right now they have just a whole bunch of vr headsets from all and then you know they have varying levels of functionality right but um pretty much every major computer company now has their own headset at this point okay yeah yep so that's mine that's my first one my turn 
Yep. All right. So this one isn't really uh, that crazy, but again, it's going to expand into another one. But we all know it's coming. Halo 6. I got that one too. Yep, I knew you. <laughs> I crossed it off my list. <laughs> so Halo 6 is obvious because we haven't heard anything about it. They already said it's going to be a trilogy, right? 343. Okay. So we know it's coming. We just don't know when. So obviously the game, I mean, I'll be surprised if it comes out this year. Um, yeah. But I mean, they've always, I mean, Halo 4 was teased in like two years prior to it coming out. Yeah. So, I mean, they're, we're still waiting for anything on Halo 6. So I feel like Halo 6 is definitely going to be announced, teased, whatever you want to call it. Uh, we'll see it at a later date. However, this is, this is the tangent. See what I did there? Uh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> Halo PC. All right. I feel in what, like in what format? What, what like uh, like like which is it Halo 5 PC or is it uh um like older uh, games kind of like similar to the, yeah, the I whole mean, thing that's so, out there right the yeah. unlicensed thing that's out there right now. So re yeah, I was going to say so that's why I brought that up. So recently they're mm -hmm. attacking that one company. Um I can't remember the name starts with the no. Um but they're not really going after them. You just can't stream it. But okay. Uh, they're going after them very aggressively out of nowhere, right? Yeah. So that that made me kind of think about it. I was like, well, why would they go out of these at these guys out of nowhere? There has to be something going on. And if we're working on a project for the PC, it just makes sense, you know? So, yeah. Like how many uh, Halos are coming out with this? I don't know because they stopped yeah. at two, I believe, right? On PC? Yeah. Yeah, I think it did. I, I'm, I think it did. Okay. That sounds right. But I'm, I mean, I just expect at least up to Halo 5, all of them on PC. Yeah. And then they'll be like, oh, by the way, Halo 6, you know? Yeah. All right. So my, predi my prediction is slightly different. So okay. I'm still going to use it because Cheater. I disagree with you on mm -hmm. Halo 6, on the Halo 6 part of your opinion. So what I think, my prediction is that we will get something new from Halo this year released this year but it's not going to be halo 6. halo wars no um because oh. halo wars 2 just came out this year um Did earlier it? this year oh. yeah yeah um that was some... right was that this year I was that... Like it was oh crap that was that was last year holy crap yeah 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 i think that was march of last year i guess um but still it's too, way too early for that i think um no so i what i think is they, they've been investing all this money into what is, I think, the best freaking Halo engine that they've ever made, right? Um, the multiplayer, the combat, the mechanics are perfect. I don't, like, I couldn't imagine a better like Halo experience at the moment. Um, I, I think the with competitive five. players, huh? With Halo with 5. five. Okay. Yes, with Halo 5. I think what killed Halo 5 was no split screen and a shitty campaign. I don't want to get into Halo yeah. campaign talk here, Maybe right? Not. But <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. But what what I what I think is, I think they made this awesome engine for for Halo Five, right? I think the multiplayer is awesome. They've been they've been doing great with releasing new content, new DLC. Freaking Forge is amaze balls. You can make literally anything you want. The creations that are out there, um, the the custom game matchmaking, like the custom game search browsing that even exists now. Um, Halo Five is on PC. Like, sure, you can't play matchmaking, but you can do custom games. Like, it's basically there. Like, they've made this awesome engine. It's 4K, 60 FPS on the Xbox One X. So they've invested all of this all of these resources into making this game better. I think they're going to come out and basically do like an ODST style. I think the one thing that was severely lacking from that game was the, 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 the story. I think they're going to take that engine and just use it to make a new story. And it'll just have this, just like ODST, it'll basically just have a better, a bigger, better version of multiplayer, more modes, more maps, more guns, right? It'll just be, but it'll be the same multiplayer. You, it won't divide the community because it'll, just like in Halo 3 and ODST, if you have ODST or Halo 3, you can still play together because it's all the same right. world, right? It's all the same experience. And then just the campaign is a totally new something. Um, maybe with Master Chief, maybe not. I'm not Agent sure. Lock. <laughs> I think people would flip their shit. To <laughs> <more Agent Lock. laughs> um, 
But uh, yeah, I think there's going to be something, and I think it's going to be this year. That's also part of my prediction. I think they're going to be like, it's coming this year. It's been three years since Halo 5. Yep. We've never gone more than three years in between Halo games, ever. Yep. So I, I think it'll be this year. And they have been um, very and, quiet, too, which yeah. is very, very uh, suspicious. Yep. So. I agree. So, and bonus, they add in, they figure out how to add in split screen. <laughs> maybe X, maybe it's Xbox One X only. Maybe they, they change some stuff around. I don't Plug know. Plug in another controller. Yeah. Yep. They figure out how to make that work. <laughs> so my turn. So, yes. Back to you. So this, this is the, <laughs> this is the, the crazy prediction, right? No, no, no. I think he's, he got one more. Oh, one, one more. Regular. Ooh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Ooh. Okay. So this is kind of another one that. I was actually looking around. I couldn't find anything about this, but I was actually surprised. But Gears 5. Gears 5? Okay. So everyone's talking about all these exclusives, and everyone keeps talking about Halo, but no one's talking about Gears 5. Yeah. They never actually announced anything to a sequel, but if you play Gears 4, you can clearly tell that they're definitely going to keep going. Yeah. So hopefully we'll see Gears 5 teaser, and we'll get more into... I don't want to spoil Gears yeah gears four but um yeah yeah there's at the very end yeah yeah <laughs> don't four, spoil it well yeah it's good okay well. so you think um so you think just but it's just like a teaser a quick nothing like gameplay or just a quick uh like maybe a quick cinematic type trailer or something just to say hey this is coming but it's it's probably far off i feel like they're gonna open up xbox showcase with gears five really yes like Damn. boom, just boom. Okay, so I think it's a little too early. I think that game came out 2016, end of 2016. Um, so it's, we're only two years out. Um, oh, so yeah, I, 2016. Yeah, so I think we're um, a little too close for years still. Um, but that game was massively successful. Um, if they can maybe repurpose the the engine. Because it was a current gen game, so there's no reason to really have to reboot the engine or anything. So they, you could imagine a world where the the life cycle, the iteration for this next one is much quicker. Right. Um. I, I could I could see that, but I could see it in teaser form, a quick like, hey, we're doing this. This yeah, game is coming. Teaser. Yeah. But it's you know it's 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 probably 2019. Um. Or, sorry. Yeah. 2019 is when I could see that fall. Like I would say early 2019, but early. Okay. Cool. I I, I could imagine maybe um. Maybe more like like Gears of War DLC or something. Okay. Announced though, I could see that because that that community is still very very active. Oh yeah. Yep. Cool. Um, all right. So my last normal prediction is uh, I think we finally get a tease of the rumored Fable reboot game. Cross that. Um, huh? <laughs> that's okay. You're done with your normal prediction. That's, that's true. That's true. true. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so. Uh, I, I, but I think it's just a tease. I think that game is still in very early development. Some of the rumors that have come out kind of made it seem that it was just kind of getting started this year. Um, but I think the announcement is that it is a full reboot and not Fable 4. I don't think it's like a continuation. I don't think they're saving any of that those assets or anything. I think it's a full reboot. Same world, you know, style, themes. But, um, you know, maybe some new gameplay, you know, fresh gameplay mechanics and uh just you know it, a, a new developer just giving them free reign to take their own kind of stab on what it means to be a fable game right uh yeah i was looking into a little bit um so i saw peter say something about the reboot and he said mm -hmm. uh they're calling it fable 4 but i mean it's going to be a reboot from what i heard um but they want to do something to where there was no guild it was like an Wait, wait, wait. You, you said Peter Molyneux? Yeah, the original. Well, the, the, he's, gone. I, I, he's gone. He's yeah, gone. Yeah, I mean, Lionhead is gone. Right. Lionhead has been dissolved completely. They right. no longer exist as a studio. But Peter, Peter said that he was going to try and like try and talk with them about the direction. Ah, okay. That, that's just something I read. Um, but yeah. he said if they did a reboot, he would want to go the direction of um, like open world Fable to where there was yeah. like, so obviously like Fable 1, 2, and 3 and all those, you had like a it was open world, but it's very linear to like where right. you could go. This right. one would be more like sandboxy, is yeah. the direction he wanted to go before yeah, the guild that. was founded. So, yeah, it'd be pretty cool. Yep. So that's my last normal rumor. So you want to hit me with your 
extra crazy wild uh, pie in the sky prediction? Absolutely not. No. So, uh, <laughs> <laughs> so Project Red. Okay. You know, is confirmed to be there. Wait, what is Project Red? I'm not. Uh, uh, I'm drawing a CD, CD Project Red. Uh, oh, CD Project. Oh, yeah. Okay, okay, CD Project Red. Gotcha, yeah. gotcha. Their game. Yeah. yeah. So, what's your three? All them. Um, right. Yeah. So yeah. They. Well, that tweet was like maybe six months ago. Now they tweeted finally about Cyberpunk. Um, right. The peep tweet is that the one you mean where they just went peep? That one. Uh. Yeah. Or beep. They beep, just said like beep. beep I think. Thing yeah, on yeah, or something. Yeah. 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 And then everyone's like, oh. So right. there's definitely something going on with cyberpunk, right? Yeah. But th this is my curveball. I don't think they're going to come out with anything cyberpunk yet. Okay. Or, or E3. I'm sure they'll showcase something with cyberpunk, but I have a feeling they're going to come out with a new IP as well. I think they're going to do two projects at once. But th wait, so wait, what is, what about this relates to, to Xbox though? Yep. If this is your, huh? <laughs> uh, it's just, I don't know, Witcher 3, I just played on Xbox. I for completely forgot it was a platform, but, you know. <laughs> um, but yeah, I mean, Project Red, I just okay. put it in there, but um, maybe maybe they'll make an Xbox exclusive IP. <laughs> There you, go. there you go. Now, now it's a, now it's a, there you go. That's your, that's your crazy curveball. Yeah, Cyberpunk 2077 comes out, announced as an Xbox One exclusive. Hell yeah. Now it's an Xbox curveball. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, so my crazy uh, pie in the sky uh, prediction here is that they give a VR headset to everyone in the audience at the press conference. Um, in conjunction with their their new VR, calm down, uh, like VR on Xbox. Yeah, so they there's precedent for this. They did this uh, back in 2010 with the Xbox 360 Slim. They gave an Xbox 360 to everybody what? in the audience at the press conference. And it will be available in stores later this week, unless unless you were here in the audience at the Will Turn Theater. In which case, we're shipping the new Xbox 360 to you right now on us. Oh, yeah. I did not know that. Yep. Dude, yeah, man. it was a, a huge deal. There, there was a little bit of, um, you know, like, is this a bribe or like whatever, right? Like the press kind of had mixed reaction to it because obviously they're the press. You know, do I accept this? X, like you're giving me a free Xbox. But then I think a lot of it is also, well, they give consoles to reviewers and stuff all the time so there was some mixed reaction to it i think um but uh anyways end of the day i'm gonna be there in the room because i'm going to xbox <laughs> fan fest so that's why it's my crazy curveball prediction because i would love to get a free vr headset Start i'm not really need to see when you get in there <laughs> <laughs> yeah so uh you know th that's that's my crazy prediction they give one to everyone to try and start pushing their VR kind of agenda. Hey, try try VR on our platform. You can go home, you can play it today and to really start to broaden the market, I guess, I don't know, to, okay. you know, just to, to start getting cool. people exposed to it. I, re I really want Microsoft to start getting into VR, honestly. It'd be yeah. way easier for, I mean, play, uh, PlayStation VR, I think that's what it's called. Yep. Like yes, they, got, they got Resident Evil 7. Right. Like, I play on PC and I can't even play that right now. Like, come on. Right. So I'd like to play Resident right. Evil 7 in VR. Yeah. All right. So that is it for our Xbox predictions. Sorry, I think we were a little bit long-winded here. <laughs> Just a little bit. <laughs> yeah. But uh, what do you guys think? Uh, give us your predictions in the comment section below. All right. Welcome back, everybody. Um, so next up, the next... Uh, conference that we're going to give our predictions for the next of the big three at least is uh our Ni uh, nintendo um so they're having their you know they're not doing a press conference per se this year they are doing their nintendo direct um on tuesday like they've done the last several years but obviously they're going to be showing off a ton of really cool new stuff and so we again we've each got three predictions um we don't know what each other's predictions are and then we'll do one crazy wild prediction right at the end Cool. 
Let's do it. All right, I'm gonna kick us off then. Um, my first Nintendo E3 2018 prediction is uh, pretty, probably a pretty safe bet. Nintendo shows off more Labo. <laughs> um, uh, but uh, I'll take it one step further than just that they show more Labo. Um, I think it's on. St I think we get it during the direct. I think, and but I think we get smaller and cheaper options of um, of Labo instead of just the. Uh, you know, right now we have the sixty dollar variety pack, the eighty dollar robot pack. Um, I think we get some maybe some standalone items from the variety pack. You know, five bucks each with it, just a downloadable version of the game or something like that. So just to really start to get people in. Uh, you know, coming in and trying it out. Um, and also, you know, to have that thing that just in the toy, the toy aisle of a store, oh, here's a Nintendo pack, five bucks, you pick it up, you go home and you're, and you're messing right, around yeah. with, right, and you're getting, you know, that kind of gateway drug to the rest of Nintendo Labo. Um, I don't know, what do you think about that? Yeah, I mean, I was just in the store the other day and I think you brought it up about the Labo thing. I was like, you know, and I checked it out and I was like, oh, wow, $80, uh, yeah. no, thank you. I mean, yeah. So the price, I mean, that'd be pretty cool if they just brought it down, you know, something smaller. Just, right. I mean, that'd definitely be my gateway drug to get the $80 one. <laughs> yeah. So, eh, nothing much more to say about that. You want to give us your first 2018 prediction? My first 2018 prediction. All right. So, uh, I'll go, I'll go with this one first. So, I think they announced this last E3, but. You know how uh, Todd Howard is. Okay. Releasing every single form of Skyrim that he can multiple <laughs> times. So uh -huh. I feel like he's going to do the same thing to another game called Fallout 4. Okay. I feel like Fallout 4 is going to come to the Switch. Yeah. That sounds like a pretty solid prediction. Only because, you know, Todd Howard, he just, he wants his game on every platform. And the Switch is really the only new one. So why not, you know? Yeah. Well, wouldn't you? Yeah. I mean, <laughs> Everyone wants to be on Switch right now. Like every game is just is now. Uh, like I was at PAX, and pretty much every developer that was there that we spoke to, all they said the biggest surprise for us this year is that everyone is just asking us, "Are you going to be on Switch? Are you going to be on Switch?" What? It's 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 that big, man. Wow. Um. So as a developer, yeah, you have this game, and and if you are able to port it to something else, it's, you know, big company like that, that's a huge untapped market. For you, right. so yeah, I, I think that's a pretty. I, I could see that, you know, pre a pretty safe bet. Okay. <clears throat> Interesting. And they've shown that Skyrim is incredibly portable. And now, granted, Skyrim is much older. Um, right. But you know, they've been able to port that to so much stuff. Um, I'm, you know, I'm sure, you know, they're, they're the same company, the same studio, even. So why not? I'm sure their their engines were similarly designed to be extremely portable to other, to other right. devices you know turn down the graphics change some settings whatever else really quickly and boom you now you're on switch yeah yep and that'd be pretty cool just you know just, you know in the car just playing fallout 4 you know yeah yeah i love i love fallout so i'd be down for that i'd be down for playing that on a plane or something let's do cool. it you and me <laughs> blind coach <laughs> <laughs> we talk about man i fly first class everywhere i go <laughs> Oh, okay. <laughs> uh, all right. So my next prediction is uh, I think we're going to get uh, the Metroid Prime 4 gameplay trailer. Um, yeah, I, I think it's a pretty safe bet, right? They teased it at, uh, and I know we talked about this earlier in the show. Um, they teased it last year, just, you know, the kind of the logo, that was it. Um, but I, I, there's some, you know, there's some people that say, oh, it's it's way too early. We're only going to get uh, like a cinematic trailer, like a tonal piece. Um, but no, I think we're going to get, I think we're going to get gameplay. Um, I think that game might be actually pretty far along in development. Um, and uh, I, I don't think it, I don't think it'll be playable. Um, and I don't think it'll even be this year. I think it's going to be fall 2019. Um, but I think we, I think they have enough that they can show us some some cool gameplay to see just, you know, the the expectations of kind of what the graphics will look like, what the gameplay is going to look like, that kind of thing. Yeah, I mean, I was just expecting just a cinematic trailer, honestly. Okay. Uh, but that was definitely on my list. Uh, yep. But I mean, that'd be pretty cool just to see some gameplay, honestly. Like, yeah. I haven't played Prime since the GameCube one, so. 
I think that was the first one actually, wasn't it? Yeah. So. GameCube days, yeah. Yeah. Very long so, time ago. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the brick with a handle. Yeah. Um, but yeah, that'd be really cool just to see some gameplay. Yeah, and I mean, Prime skipped Wii U. So they've already skipped an entire generation. So, okay. like, I think it's time, right? That's why I think that that is... Okay, that's, that why I, that's why I think we're pretty far along. Yeah. Okay. Interesting. All right. Want to hit us with number three? Number three, Luigi's Mansion. Oh no! Wait. Sorry. This is your num This is your. This is your second prediction. So. Well, third overall, but second for me. But yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, Luigi's Mansion, though. Uh, okay. People have been kind of hinting at it. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know if it's gonna be. I want to say it's gonna be a sequel. I don't want it to be a reboot. Like I don't okay. I, like I'm I'm done with these reboots, you know. Yeah. They're nice to go back and relive, but I want to see something new. Like I want I want the same concept, just something new and refreshing, you know. So I really hope they bring back Luigi's Mansion to the Switch. Cool. Yeah, I could see that. Uh, I never played the first one, but I I know it was. Well, actually, that's not true. I played. My sister had it, um, and uh, I played around with it. Um, you with stole her, it. But I never. I never. Well, I, I played it. I, she, she was playing it one day, and I was like, oh, can I play this? And I, you know, I messed around, but I never really, um, you know, I didn't own the game or, or, you know, play through it myself. Right. But that game is massively popular, so, yeah, I can see that. Okay. Being announced. Nintendo's definitely all about kind of cashing in on all their most successful IP right now, now that this, the Switch is, this recycling is on it. fire. So, yeah, just yeah. do it. Hit, hit all – they got to hit all the freaking major – the tent poles like bring in all that nostalgia just get everything working for them and i think that that's right up there all right cool. what's yours what's your next all right prediction? so my so my last uh real prediction is um i think we're gonna get a star fox reboot teaser trailer Ooh, i didn't even yeah. think about star fox it's been a minute yep. yeah exactly i think um I, you know i think that franchise kind of fell from glory on you know kind of the previous generations of consoles and uh you know they they just went in on the the nes classic right where they had they had star fox and then they had like was it sorry the, the snes classic right where they um they had star fox and then like the unreleased star fox 2 um right because the star fox 2 ended up going and become in basically being trashed at the end of the SNES cycle and then becoming like, then they had star Fox 64 came out instead. Mm -hmm. Um, and like, I don't know, just, just the fact that they, they brought that out and they put that on the SNES classic and they're kind of getting that game back into people's minds. I could absolutely see them doing a new star Fox. Uh, but I think it's, um, I don't know. I, I think it's just like a much newer, more polished version of the game, better flight mechanics. Um, I was going to ask you, do you think it would be just like Star Fox 64 where you're just flying around? Or do you think it would be like, uh, I think that was, what was that? The GameCube one, Star Fox Adventures, I think is what it's called. Where you're yeah, like I, actually I, walking around. No, yeah, I think it's going to be, um, uh, I think it's going to be the, 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 a fighter jet game. Okay. Um, so if it, they did have the like horribly received Star Fox Zero on the Wii U. Um, oh, I didn't even know that existed. And, and that was like flying around, but just they, they they made a lot of use of like moving the you know the tablet around to aim and doing a bunch of weird stuff like that that just wasn't that great. The game itself just wasn't very enjoyable. The, the mechanics, the piloting wasn't great. Um, uh, so I, I think they're gonna try and capture that. They're gonna try. They're gonna try and capture the Nintendo sixty four like nostalgia. Nostalgia, yeah. Um, yeah, I think that's what they're gonna. I, I don't know if it's I don't, I'm not saying it's going to be a remake I think it'll be a reboot but it'll be kind of much more in line with that version of the game okay that'd be pretty cool to see franchise yeah I'd love to play that yep so that's my that's that's my last prediction that I think is feasible okay <laughs> so now we're doing the the wild ones right uh no you still you still have one, one more, more normal oh, prediction man. all right yeah. all right uh so we kind of touched on this a little bit more uh earlier um smash gameplay yeah it, it's gotta happen like yep you you can't just they they teased smash out of nowhere one mm -hmm. like no one expected it yeah and then on top of that it's just they didn't even show anything like we don't know like any new fighters we don't know any like anything right so i'm really hoping we at least see the gameplay this e3 
do you um, do you think it's going to be a new Smash? Or do you think it's going to be a port of the Wii U version? Because the Wii U version was pretty freaking awesome. Uh, so I never had a chance to play that one. Well, I guess mm -hmm. I kind of did. Yeah. Um, only because that was on the 3DS. Okay. Um, yeah. So, I mean, I guess I played that one. Um, but it's strictly on the DS because that's all we had on the ship. Um, okay. But, I mean, I just honestly, I just rather see just a brand new one. Yeah. Completely new. So. Cool. Um, yeah, I, I actually had that as like an extra uh, prediction in case you nabbed one of mine. Um, yeah, I think it'll be, I think we'll see it. Um, I think we'll see gameplay. I think we'll see um, the roster, uh, the, the core roster. Like Nintendo likes everything. it. Yeah. yeah, yeah, they like to leak out kind of more and more new characters as you go. I think we'll see the core roster of, you know, hey, hey, here's your Zeldas, your Marios, kind of that stuff. And they'll leave some surprises for later. Um, but yeah, I think that's coming. I do, however, think that it is going to be some type of port of the Wii U version. I mean, it's sma It's hard to say what is it. What is a port of Smash? Smash is like the exact same game year over year, <laughs> but they just add more stuff to it, more levels. They they tweak a few things. They tweak. Right. You know, they. Um, so it's hard to say what exactly constitutes a port or not. But um, I think it'll largely be the same game, um, but just with more levels, more modes, more characters. Um, but it's going to be based off that Wii U uh, version that basically like nobody got. Right. So I was going to ask you on top of that, since we already kind of talked about the gameplay, I guess we can kind of expand on that a little bit through our own little predictions. What new character do you think is going to come out then? Oh, uh, I actually on, I was watching like an IGN podcast the other day and um, I want to say it was Pear Schneider said that he thinks uh, like Crash Bandicoot might be in there what um, i mean yeah i mean it's switch now yeah and um i mean just the you know the new trilogy was just released it's it's really kind of front and center in people's minds so that would be crazy that'd be a cool character yeah he would fit so well too that's like the crazy part yep yeah he's a perfect character for smash Agreed. okay what about uh, you i was thinking uh a new uh kirby um character just because they just released it or uh okay. a version of mario with the, just the a new hat. version right. oh like where he he throws the hat and stuff right. like a mario odyssey version yeah it's, that uh, i think that kirby is like i don't know what's new about Kir like kirby's always just been able to like steal other people's powers <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it's hard to like kirby is already like a, like the ditto of <laughs> yeah right like um but i could definitely see the mario odyssey you know just that version of of Mario being there. Yeah. Cool. All right. So my last, um, my wild pie in the sky prediction here is, uh, so we know there's a new Pokemon game coming. We know it's coming for the switch. I think it's going to be, well, I don't, I, don't, I don't actually believe this, <laughs> but I would love if it was a full on 3d open world RPG, just like, everyone's been asking for that for like God, years, yes years and, and and they just they refuse to deliver it but i think now you know they're under new management new leadership they're already bucking trends with you know with this portable that is a console uh, i think it's i think it's the time i think they can nail it um i would i would love that i would love that so much i don't think we'll ever get it because they, they've never done it before but god i would love that so much i mean yeah same here honestly it's just like the that like that right there is pretty much the only thing that would get me back into Pokemon because like I tried Pokemon Go with an Niantic, mm -hmm. yeah. Uh, I felt like they just kind of like got that pawned off on them. They just yeah. got license for it. It wasn't right. bad at first, but it definitely lost its uh, nostalgia really fast. Yeah. Um, but with a three D open world type of thing, it's like what everyone's been asking for, and that's why everyone went Pokemon Go because it's like the closest thing we had, you know. Yeah. And, like I had a Caterpie like on my microphone and I could just catch it, you know? <laughs> but yeah, I mean, if I could just literally sit down and just play with an open world concept, not like this 3D stuff, I feel like that would be perfect. Yeah. And also slim down the Pokemon because I'm lost after like Gen 4. <laughs> <laughs> cool. All right. What's your wild and crazy? Wild mission? and crazy, right? So... I'm glad you brought up the the Robo 
Blocks thing. What's it called? The Labo. 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 Yeah. Roboblox is a game that you know, no one likes. <laughs> Roblox. Yeah. <laughs> um. So. VR. Mm -hmm. For the Switch. What? Yeah. So. <laughs> you Labo. Your, do you put the Switch in your face? I don't know what you would do with the Switch. <laughs> I'm, I'm not that into it yet. But I just like thought about it. I was like, well, they already got the Labos. So why can't they do augmented VR on top of that, you know? Just, yeah. Because then you would be truly like immersed in it. Not like, you know, yeah. I don't know. It's just something that I thought of, you know, with the Labo and the, the robot. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah, I, I think that's a satisfactory pie in the sky prediction. Because <laughs> I, mean, I don't think it'll ever happen. Just I don't think it will either, but yeah. <laughs> it does some crazy stuff sometimes. I, I, I don't know if they have the power in their console, that's, honestly. That's true. That's true. But, yeah. I mean, you could just put the power in the headset, you know? Yeah, I could see them doing some basic stuff using, like, the 3D. But, like, the Switch itself is just a little too heavy, you know? It's a little too heavy. Like if, if they could do something where you just put the switch screen in front of your face, but it's also really low. It's pretty low resolution. Right. Um, so I don't know if it would be a great experience. So yeah, I don't think that will, I don't think that'll ever happen. <laughs> so that's why it's, it's a great pie in the sky prediction. Yeah. <laughs> All right, guys. Well, um, that's it for our Nintendo E3 2018 predictions. What do you guys think? Did we nail it? Are we way off? We're probably way off. Let us know your thoughts and comments, uh, your predictions in the comment section below. All right, welcome back everyone. The uh, next segment we're gonna get into, uh, the, the last of the big three is uh, our Sony E3 2018 predictions. Um, so I cut this off for the last one. So uh, well, just real quick, uh, we're gonna do uh, the same thing we've done for the other. We have uh, three prediction, three like kind of real predictions each. And um, and then one kind of crazy wild prediction, and uh, we don't know. Yeah, and we don't know each other's predictions. So if one of us has uh, the others, we'll have to scramble and try and come up with another one. <laughs> All right. So I could, yeah, exactly. That does seem to happen a lot. Um, so I think this is off for the last one. So you want to go start us off now? My turn. All right. Yes. All right. So uh, it's kind of already been announced ish. I mean, we know it's happening. Mm -hmm. uh, but Bloodborne 2. Okay. Uh, the first one was super successful. I love that one. Uh, I wasn't really a Dark Souls fan for obvious reasons. Uh, yeah. But Bloodborne, to me, seemed a little more uh, less uh, controller throwy. Yeah. So, I mean, I love Bloodborne. So, Bloodborne 2, I'm hoping to see some gameplay, some trailer or something, you know? Yeah. Um. So, actually, one of my... Uh... One of my predictions that I'm gonna throw out here is actually that the new From Software game Ooh. isn't Blood. So From Software, they're the right. company that yeah, makes yeah. Bloodborne, right? Like I think it's not Bloodborne Two. I think it's gonna. I think it's a new IP. Um, but same kind of style. I think it'll be in a similar yeah. style as like Demon Souls and Bloodborne. Um, but I think it's gonna be uh, just something new, a new world, yeah. a new. I don't think it'll be. Bloodborne 2. Um, there was some, and I can't remember the specifics of it now because honestly, I, I, I'm not too into that genre of games. So I haven't followed it that closely, but I was reading up and there was some stuff that was leading people to believe it wasn't Bloodborne. Just like the specific text they've used um, has kind of hinted more at um, some of their like previous games um, that it's okay. I, I don't know, like they were using some kind of, I think it was like some specific like verses from like something from like one of like some other game that they've made um which is why people think that it's going to be um possibly something else okay um, that's interesting yeah don't take my word on that one at all <laughs> i know very little about the bloodborne series and from software in general so it'll probably be bloodborne too <laughs> <laughs> All right, so what's your prediction then? <laughs> um, okay, so instead of uh, that, I'm going to say um, I think uh, Ghost of Tsushima um, gets another trailer, but it's uh, I think we're still going to see minimal gameplay. This was something that they showed off. Was that Hideo? At... No, 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 no. Um, this is not uh, Kojima. Um, this was... Uh... Oh, gosh, what was the developer? This was a game they, sh they showed off at um, Ghost of... So we're gonna we're gonna do it live. We're doing live research right now. Um, 
Oh, it's Sucker Punch. That's right. I knew that. Um, oh, what? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So um, they showed this at the um, – it's like at the, the Game Awards or at like the, the PlayStation – like um, – uh the 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 sony um like fan fest or whatever it is that they do at the end of the year um i don't i don't know yeah they, they, it wasn't showed off at e3 last year it came it came later in the year um at one of the other conferences like the game awards or, or something i think it was a sony event that was just later in the year um and it was kind of like an unexpected like surprise hey here's a, a totally new game um you should yeah if you haven't seen the trailer for that check it out it looks yeah it's an, I, got, I just wrote it down yeah, I didn't, it's, I didn't even know Sucker Punch like was even producing games anymore. I thought they kind of split ways. Yeah, no, Infamous. it's in it's in uh, feudal Japan, and um, it, it so you're like a samurai running around, um, but you know it was just very, um, you know it was kind of very dark and like a heavy kind of tone piece is all they showed us last year. Um, you know, just some kind of CGI cinematics, nothing really. Um, no real gameplay or anything right um i i think that game but and anyways i think we're gonna see more of that game um at e3 because the the kind of fan reception to the original trailer was pretty overwhelmingly positive um but i think that that'll be a uh, i think it'll be a fall 2019 game okay um so i think we'll get minimal gameplay this year you know mostly kind of uh cinematic in-game trailer um, with maybe like a touch of gameplay and then next year at E3 it'll be like their big blowout um, like hey here's a ton of information about this game here's gameplay you can play it and it's coming you know October November 2019 right okay yeah so that's my first one okay so my second one um, so I have not finished Horizon Zero Dawn like uh -huh. we talked about earlier yeah um, so I don't know the ending but uh, I'm predicting either a brand new one or a new IP. Again, I don't know how it ended, mm. so I don't know how the finale happens. However, yeah. I'm thinking either they're going to expand on Horizon Zero Dawn or just completely go a different direction because they've already established themselves as um, what's what's the developer's name? Uh, um, Gorilla. Gorilla. Yeah. Yep. So they've already made Killzone. Now they made uh, Horizon Zero Dawn. Mm -hmm. They've already established they can make whatever they want now. They've made a yeah. shooter and they made an open world. Like, those two, like, why not both together? Which is also another one of mine was a new IP shooter. Okay. So that's one thing that, in my opinion, Sony's lacking. They don't have a really strong shooter right now. Yeah, that's true. It's just all platformers. And Killzone was that shooter. So maybe they might do a new Killzone-esque kind of shooter with all open right. world. Yeah, I can see that. Um, I think... Um, so Horizon was last year, right? 2017, um, I think that that released. So I want to say 16, late 16. Is it that? Was it really that? Because the DLC just came out for. Zero Dawn. We're doing it live. No, February. Yeah, it was early. It was February 2017. Okay. February 28th. Um, so yeah, I, I think it's a little early. To announce a new uh, game from from Gorilla, but that said, Sony loves to announce stuff super early and just kind yeah. of build that fan hype. Well, I mean, so, look at God of War. Yeah, like that was announced what two years ago now. Yep. Yeah. So I mean, I, I could I could see that. I could see it being um, you know a Gorilla Games logo, uh, just a quick kind of teaser of a gun <laughs> <laughs> something yeah like just just something I, I could see that i could see that on stage I, I don't think it'll be much information at all right uh, we may not we don't even may not even know what kind of game it is um if it's not a horizon zero dawn continue you know a new um you know uh, a new game set in that world or in that you know that atmosphere prequel something like that i don't know um but uh yeah i could see i could see more from that studio being teased uh yeah so um my next prediction is um uh, i i think we're gonna get the last of us 2 gameplay reveal this okay. year yeah, I got that um, so yeah so so far it's just been all cinematics you know uh, cgi trailers uh you know we it's just it's just an all bit it's just been tonal pieces right there's nothing really gameplay um we had that trailer last year that was just like super brutal um 
where the the ladies like being hung by the thing right. and they like the, the people come in and kill everyone and there's just like so much gore it was i mean it was it was insane um but uh, i think we're finally going to get actual gameplay but i think that and, and i think we're going to get um a general release window and i think it'll be fall 2019 2019 yep wow yeah okay i, I think that's just the like their big game that they want to have in that fall slot Polish. that i mean they well, did just well, release god of war too so that, that makes sense just uh, yeah I, I mean not even like the the polish type thing i just think that I, I think it's not ready yet i don't think it's ready for this year um and uh i I, I think they don't want to. It's not the type of game. That game is too big. That game is going to blow up everything around it. Why put it in the spring? I mean, right. granted, they put God of War in the spring, um, which was quite surprising to me. But I think not anything. Not I mean, Naughty Dog is their tent pole like franchise. So I, I yeah, I think it's, you know, I I think it, at least they line it up for fall 2019. Maybe it ends up getting delayed. Even um, Uncharted 4 was the same thing. It was marketed fall of 2016 and it got pushed right until um spring of 2017 um right with something like that or or like a year earlier I, yeah yeah, yeah. It, <clears throat> yep i could have swore no i'm trying to far came out in the middle of 2016 so then it was sorry then it was 2015 and 2016 sorry, okay then. Um, I, I was gonna say because i remember because again i was on deployment so i remember it very specifically like this yeah. guy had uncharted 4 in the middle of the Pacific Ocean, I was like, "How did you get that?" You know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That, that's what it was. So. Yeah, it was. Sorry, it was 2015 and 2016. It was like, that's what I was going for. That it was originally announced like a okay. fall game. Yeah, I um, remember it got delayed a bunch of times. Right, but... and it kept getting it, it kept getting delayed until like yeah, it was May 10th, 2016, when it finally okay. got released. So I could see something like that happening because this is the type of game where they they want to give them as much time to craft just like a perfect experience. Um, and so I could, you know, three years puts them at t fall 2019, but then I could even see it honestly end up and ending up getting delayed into, into 2020, um, yeah. early 2020. But I think they're going to target next year, fall 2019. I could see that. Yeah. All right. So that's my second one. Yeah. That's yeah. my second one. Yeah. You're, you're up. So my third one. So this is like a normal one, right? Nothing crazy yet. Uh, yeah. Okay. Um, so, hopefully, it's kind of like, I'll just do one. Mm -hmm. uh, same company, though. You already know I'm going to go with. Uh, Kingdom Hearts 3. Okay. Show me anything. Show me something, you know? Yeah. Like, we've been waiting. Man, when it, Kingdom Hearts 2, I remember the, the ending. I was like, oh, sweet. There's going to be a third one. Right. Still waiting, you know? So... Yeah. I feel like the fans have been itching for this more than Final Fantasy VII, in my right. opinion. Just because no one even knew that Kingdom Final Fantasy VII was even going to get a remake, you know? Yeah. But they knew the sequel to Kingdom Hearts Three was coming out. But yet they've been focusing on Final Fantasy VII. Yeah. So hopefully we get a release date or something for Kingdom Hearts III. I mean, they, they've shown off quite a bit of gameplay. Um, yeah, I think like they... little like demos. Like well, the... I mean, they've been showing gameplay. They've been releasing all their worlds. I think they said they only have one world left to release. Oh, um, what? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, I mean, they've definitely oh. been teasing. So they've just been slow. You know, it hasn't just been a big affair every time they announce information. Um, it's not always right. at like on the show floor. It's not always on the expo. It's usually just like a trailer. Hey, here's the new world. Um, so I think they said they have one world left to announce, and that game is coming this year. It's 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 the release window right now is 2018. Right. Um, so, uh, yeah, I mean, I, I think for sure that, that that will be there. I think it will be a, a focal point. Um, but it's also um, Kingdom Hearts 3 is uh, PlayStation 4 and Xbox. So it is. Oh, um, right. That is. Yeah. Yeah. About that. So it is multi-platform. Um, so I think that's m I think more likely it will be. At, I don't. There, it'll probably be in both. I think it'll be at Sony and then I think it'll also be at the um, the Square Enix. Actually, I don't, I don't know if Square Enix is doing a conference. They haven't. Com they, they've done conferences in the past. I don't know if they're doing a separate conference this year. Okay. Actually, um, and I and I had that in my notes where I read off all the live stream times. Did I read one for Square Enix? No, I did not read one for Square Enix. I don't, I don't think they've done one. Um, it's been 
And if it was, it was always like pretty small on the order of like the PC um, press comp, the PC PC press briefing that they do, um, by the PC gamer and all that kind of stuff. Um, but yeah, that being said, since Square doesn't have their own conference, yeah, I think you're right. I think it'll be at PlayStation. I think it'll be yeah. at the Sony, on the Sony floor. Uh, sorry, at the on the Sony press briefing. And yeah, I think we'll get the last world reveal um, if it hasn't been already, and we'll get the um, the final release date, which fingers crossed is this year, <laughs> <Please>. 2018. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so let's see. So. My last normal prediction is uh, Final Fantasy VII Remake update. Uh, I don't I don't think we're going to get anything crazy. I think it'll just be a development update. Kind of, hey, hey, here's where we're at. There's been, like, a lot of crazy rumors flying around about that game, about how they've kind of, like, had to restart production and, like, move it to a new team. And they, like, then it was, it was, a, it was an external team, and they just said, no, screw it. We're going to bring it in-house. We're going to do it in-house. They hired all these people. Um... So I think that game is still very far away. Uh, I think they show off like a little additional footage. It's mostly kind of like placeholder type stuff. Honestly, stuff that you should kind of have to take with a grain of salt. Um, I think that I, I, I think I don't even think they talk about a release window. I think it's 2020. Um, or if they do, they say it's fall 2019 and that game absolutely. And then just to give people a date to look forward to, but it's real. Like they know full well that it'll get pushed into 2020. <laughs> Well, did, did you see how they're uh, planning on releasing it though? Like uh, the, the, the chapters the or episodes, whatever. This, yeah. The episodes, yeah. yeah. So, I mean, that's yeah. what they do with Hitman, but I don't know. I never played them, but I don't know. I feel like if they do that, it's going to lead to uh, not the full experience, but more of a, a movie, you know? Yeah. So, I'd rather have them just release the game as a remake, you right. know, not, not episodes. Yeah, I, I agree that's how I would rather have it. Um, maybe that's the update. Maybe they come in and they get their development and they say, "Hey, by the way, remember we told you no episodes." Yeah, <laughs> just we're doing one whole full thing. We know that's what you want. That's what everybody wants. We're we're getting rid of episodes. Twenty twenty five. PS six. Um, all right. So uh, yeah. So that's. Oh, now your third. Your third one. Right? So did you go this, first or did this, I go? This is my curveball. I went yeah. first. Oh, you're curveball. This curve is my curveball. Okay. All yeah. right, you ready? Yes. The wind up, the pitch, new console. You think PS5? No. No. Wait, what? No. So it's not, not PS5. Like, not well. I mean, you could call it PS8 by now, but uh, um, no, just like what the Xbox One did, you know, just the the X. So something. like, so like a Pro Pro. Super, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, PS4, I don't know. What, pro, pro. Yeah, pro, pro. <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, if you if you compare the Pro to the, the Xbox One X, the uh, X is beating it te- yeah. by technicality and hardware. Yeah. Um, I mean, you can have your whole fanboy battle about it, but it just that's yeah. the hardware for hardware. It beats it. Yeah. So I'm, I feel like PlayStation right now is threatened by that, and they need to up it. Granted, yeah. do they want to do that? I don't know. I mean, they just released God of War, so they could be like, hey, if you get this new console, you know, God of War will look even better, you yeah. know? So who knows, you know? Just curveball. Uh, yeah, curveball, true. I, I, I think I think that there's been a lot of rumors, actually, about, like, PS5 starting up lately. Oh, okay. Um, like, right. obviously, they are looking at whatever the ne- the future is. Right. They, those things have such a, a long lead time. They're obviously already looking at that. So there have been some rumors flying around, even some rumors saying that, like, it was going to be announced this year and released next year. Like, PS5. Not a PS Pro Pro, but, like, actual <laughs> new generation PS5 was going to be coming out next year. Um, honestly, I, I think they're not going to do any of that because they're – they're the leaders. They're they're still selling so many consoles. Like why, why? Like the moment you announce the next thing, you're gonna see. I think you see a yeah. dip in sales, right? Yeah. So everyone's it, just gonna wait. Yeah. Um. I think that their 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 next thing isn't coming till 2020. Honestly, I just don't think it makes sense for them because they're still selling so many consoles. So why right. bother? Like push it out a little bit further. Hit freaking tear it up in 2020 with a super powerful. You know whatever the next big thing is um and hold your your release until next year 
Um, Because I don't even think, even if they teased a new thing, PS5, just a teaser, right? Like, I... I think that alone would put a dent. They would see a decline in sales just for teasing that, like the yeah, next yeah. thing it's is like on the horizon. It's like getting a new phone. You know, you just don't. You don't want to upgrade. Yes. If you know, there's something coming. You know. Right. So. Yeah. So. Um, yeah, I don't know. But there, like I said, there's been rumors that that it's coming and that it's getting announced this year at E3. Right. So I I don't I don't believe myself, but who knows? You know. Yeah. Yep. Um. So my wild prediction right. is. Um, which I don't think will happen is PSVR two. What? Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I think they iterate on um, uh, you know to to bring it up to standards with some of the other hardware out there like like Oculus and Vive, um, and I think they uh, you know just uh, uh, you know wireless experience, no uh, no uh, like just a much better resolution screen. I think we're at that point now where wireless is 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 coming to VR. Um, I think it's it's coming this year, right? Like I think Vive was the, the first ones who were kind of pushing that that yeah. just announced that. Um, so yeah, I think it's wireless, better resolution screen, but I think it only works with PS4 Pro. PSVR two only works with PS4 Pro. I mean, I could I could kind of see that. Just, yeah. Just update their hardware. I could see that. If you want it like better, if you want the newest, best, clearest. Re- highest resolution wireless thing you got to go pro for all the extra hardware that's packed in there i don't it's think that'll little, actually happen it's a little hook but though. yeah <laughs> i don't think gotta buy sick. this too <laughs> <laughs> but uh yeah that's my pie in the sky prediction um so anyways that's it for all of our sony um e3 2018 predictions let us know how we did what do you guys think do you think we totally missed the mark are we on the ball um tell us your predictions uh leave your thoughts and comments in the comment section below all right welcome back everyone time for the last segment of our big old e3 2018 predictions episode um and uh this is just going to be kind of everything that's not the big three you know bethesda has a press conference um ubisoft ea they all have their own conferences there are other stuff going on and so we kind of wanted to talk about what we think will happen outside of nintendo sony and uh uh, and microsoft so um again we're going to kind of do the same format we did for the other ones where we each have three predictions we don't know what each other's predictions are so we'll have to come up with another one on the spot if the other person takes their prediction and uh, and then we'll we'll do one kind of wild pie in the sky prediction um, at the end. So uh, I think you kicked us off last time. Yep, so I will kick true. us off with my first prediction. Um, so my first one is uh, I think uh, Cyberpunk twenty seventy seven uh, CD Projekt Red's new game is uh, finally shown off with gameplay um, at the press conference. Uh, Let's see, I think it's coming in 2019, probably like fall 2019. Um, I think it's gonna be shown on stage at Microsoft, but not exclusive or like even a timed exclusive or anything like that. Just kind of, you know, promotionally aligning themselves with Microsoft. And um, yeah, so CD Projekt Red, they have confirmed that they are bringing an RPG to the show this year. Yeah. Um, I don't know what other RPG they'd be bringing besides Cyberpunk. Um, we know that's we know that they're working on that game. You know, we've seen kind of uh, uh, like tonal. Tweets. Well, we we've, we've seen the, the tweet right, um, yeah, the, the beep, beep tweet, and we've seen you know some like tonal kind of trailers in the past. So what else would they have been working on? I mean, I I, do, I thought they're going to show up with like an entirely new RPG you've never even heard of, and that's what they bring to the show. <laughs> Cyberpunk card game. <laughs> well no they said it they said that they are bringing an rpg specifically right, right. to the show so are they working on two rpgs at the same time unlikely uh yeah, yeah so i think i think it's there i think it's on the microsoft uh press conference yeah i mean that's pretty much it like yeah i don't know it's, I, it has to be cyberpunk let's be honest yep. yeah agree. all right what's your first prediction my first prediction that has been long overdue Mm-hmm. Elder Scrolls Six. Elder Scrolls Six. Okay. I'm sure, it's very fitting. Um, what up, Bethesda? <laughs> Gameplay day. Uh, so yeah, they uh, they're long overdue for new uh, Elder Scrolls. Long uh-huh. overdue. So it's been 
what seven years since Skyrim now, and four years since the online one, okay. and between Oblivion and Skyrim was five years, right? So they're already yeah. two years more than Skyrim. Yeah. So they haven't talked about it at all, except that uh, when they announced Fallout Four, they announced uh, six. Yeah. Um, but that was it. That's all we heard. Yeah. So hopefully. I highly doubt it. This might be a little bit of a curveball to it, but maybe they'll announce it and release it the same year. Okay. Um, that's, that's just how they did for Fallout 4. I mean, I doubt it, but you never know, you know? Yeah. So, my predict. So, I'm, I'm going to do my second prediction because it's very in line with that, but different than yours. So, I'm going to keep it. Um, <laughs> so, I think Bethesda shows off both a new Elder Scrolls game and their Starfield game. But Starfield, yeah. So Starfield is the one that's out this year. Um, so uh, Starfield is a game that um, there's just been a lot of like rumors about. Um, they they um, they trademarked right? Is it, is it trademarking or they they took a uh, um, a patent or a trademark or whatever the heck it's called out on the on the the name Starfield, and um, hmm. that was back in like. 2013 i think and then they renewed it and they renewed that name that trademark in 2016. so there's been all these rumors that this starfield game is coming it's going to be kind of in the same world as the fallout world but it's going to have to do with like outer space and what? Um, like the cosmos and all that kind of stuff so it's like just set in kind of outer space um on their uh, Bethesda E3 showcase announcement, there's like a bunch of stars. There's like a, a city skyline and then like a bunch of stars. So people think that that's alluding to um, the uh, the Starfield uh, announcement. Um, so that's, here's that's yeah. interesting because, like I said earlier, the Prey game they tweeted the moon. Uh huh. So maybe I, I'm just you know thinking brainstorming. Maybe that has something to do with that too. Maybe. So, so you gotta remember, like Bethesda is also a publisher. So right. Prey is technically a a different Arcane developer. Studios. Right. Right. So they can definitely have both in the same. You know, I, I think they can be working on Prey or something like that at the same time. But the Starfield game is specifically supposed to be um, Bethesda uh, software, or oh, Bethesda okay. game okay. studios or studios or something. Yeah. Yeah. Um, their actual development team, right? The Todd Howard team. Right. Um, so here's a few other reasons why, why I think this, right? So uh, Skyrim was 20... So why I think they're going to have a new game and I think it's going to be out this year. That, that's my second part of the prediction, right? That Starfield is out this year. Um, okay. Fallout was 2015. Uh, Skyrim was 2011. So it's been three years since their last game. Their last, the last Todd Howard true, game. True game, yeah. Um... I'm, I'm alluding back to this uh the expo floor map that we saw earlier where skyrim has a double or sorry bethesda has a double <laughs> sized they've doubled the size of their booth this year right um more than doubled it looks like according to the the, the floor plan for the all expo. skyrim all skyrim it's just, it's just all skyrim. <laughs> <laughs> everything is skyrim <laughs> um yeah so that um and uh and the reason I think it's not Elder Scrolls, the reason I think Elder Scrolls is not the game that's coming this year is because they have said on multiple occasions that they have two other major projects that they're working on that will come out before the next Elder Scrolls. You mentioned BGS. Last year, Todd was here and uh, kind of broke a little bit of news that the multiple projects sort of uh, in the works there. Yep. Uh, you know, another Elder Scrolls down the road. And you, you probably answer questions every day on Twitter down, about Down this. the road. <laughs> down the road a few yeah. games down the road to reiterate they have at least two major titles that they're they are working on before we're going to get to elder scrolls 6. It's definitely dating back well <laughs> yep <laughs> there goes my elder scrolls so the question is though what do you consider a major project right so that's why i still think we're going to see elder scrolls yeah um, i I, mean, I think they, they gotta show yeah. something like it's been way yep. too long yeah like, i agree i think they're gonna show it um i think it's not gonna be this year um, you know, maybe fall 2019, um, you know, maybe yeah. they've been working on both kind of two big games simultaneously, which I could imagine if they repurposed the, 
Fallout engine to do whatever this Starfield is, this game is, because it is supposed to be kind of set in the same world. Um, but uh, yeah, I think I, I think we we see Elder Scrolls, but it's it's not out yet, and I think we find out all about Starfield, and it's out this year. Well, I need to look this up too. So, <laughs> all right. So that is my second prediction. You're up. All right. So this is my second, right? Yes. So, uh, kind of talked about this earlier. Mm-hmm. Battlefield new game title 2018. World War Two. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I really want them, like we said, to do the whole like different fronts. Yeah. Um, like, but I want all of them. Like, I want Africa. I want Germany, France, uh, Russia. Yeah. Uh, and all the Pacific Islands. I want all of that. Like, That'd be that, dope. I feel, I feel yeah. like that's the only World War II game that has not done that yet. Like, because we had that whole, you know, era where, you know, World War II games were coming out like every six months. And then everyone's right. like, all right, you know, chill out. And we went into yeah. the modern warfares and all that. Yeah. So hopefully we can get back into that whole World War II kind of older style and, you know, actually put our technology that we have now into yeah. these awesome games, you know? Yep. Yeah, I can see that. I think that, I mean, that totally makes sense. Battlefield 1 was a huge success. Yeah. Um, I could imagine that they immediately started working on like, well, what's the next thing we do after World War One? Well, let's hit up World War Two. Um, <laughs> Yeah, I, I can see that, I, and I and I hope I hope they do the same thing with like campaign, where they just have these awesome, really well crafted like little vignette stories, stories. instead yeah. of trying to piece together like one whole cohesive story. Um, it was just so cool that you got to try. Okay, this mission you're in a tank. This mission you're flying a plane. Um, yeah. it was just so awesome, and then just to have each of the stories geared around that. It's great. So yeah, I think I think that sounds pretty good, pretty feasible. Points. Okay. <laughs> points um yeah so uh my last prediction um i think we're gonna see oh boy yeah the other ones are pretty safe so i'm, I'm gonna go with this one um which is uh maybe not as safe but uh i think we're gonna see a new splinter cell game Ooh. announced um i, I, I think it's about that yeah i think it's uh you know it's at the ubisoft press conference um, but I don't think it's, uh, I don't think we see very much. I think it's just a, they like to do that. And one last thing, you know, before I leave you one last thing, like as they're leaving, they love to do that. Um, and I think it's, and one last thing, you know, the, the sound of his, yeah. like his, the We're goggles. See a guy dropping the ceiling with the goggles on. <laughs> <laughs> like in the actual theater, yeah. the real guy. <laughs> yeah, I think, I think they do that. Yeah, Ubisoft does like to do some weird stuff at their press conference, so I would not yeah. put it past them to have a guy <laughs> drop from the ceiling. Um, yeah, I, I, yeah, I, I, I think that game is, you know, it's not this year. Maybe it's 2019, 20, I don't know. But I think they just kind of tease it. Nothing, nothing major. Um, you know, maybe a tonal kind of trailer piece or something like that. Um, but no gameplay or anything. But yeah, that's what I think. That'd be pretty cool. It's definitely been a while since the last one. Yeah. I think the last one was Blacklist. Mm. That's the one that... Jeez, I don't know. Because um... the last one I played that I can like, vividly remember was Double Agent. Yeah, that's the one I'm th- that's the one that comes to mind for me too. But so there, was there really was not. one right after that, and I'm pretty sure that was Blacklist, which was like way more fast paced and like yeah. darker. Let's see. I don't, Last I don't know if that came Splinter out. Cell game. Uh, Splinter Cell, yeah. Blacklist was the PS3 era. Okay, yep. Um, yeah, yeah, Blacklist, 2013. Wow. PS3. Yeah. So Blacklist it's was about, the last one. Yeah, it's about freaking time. We're ready, I think, for... Um, That's crazy. You know, yeah, we're ready for, for a new Splinter Cell, for sure. I'm ready. My body's yep. ready. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So, what's your last prediction for the curveball? No, no, no. This is your because I oh started. my last real one. Yeah, okay. yeah, your last I, one. I always keep track. <laughs> yep. What is this? My first one. Um. So. All right. That's gonna be my curveball. So, this is kind of curveball-ish. Yeah. Uh, we talked about it earlier. Um, Gearbox. Okay. 
it's not going to be Borderlands 3. It's not Borderlands 3. Okay. I so feel like they're going to use the same engine, but I feel like Borderlands is very successful, but I feel like the uh, developer is a little tired of it. Yeah. Because, I don't know, like, that's been around for almost 10 years. Yeah. So I feel like they want to change things up and, you know, switch it up. So kind of Borderlands 3-ish yeah. prediction, but I, I want to see something new, in my opinion. I really like that prediction. Like, I would, <laughs> honestly, like, as much as I love, you know, Borderlands, particular Borderlands 2, um, I would love to see something like totally new and out there from them. You know, yeah, sure. I know it is a new engine because they've been showing off the new engine that they've been using. Um, like I said, at GDC, they've been doing like a lot of tech demos of this engine they've built. Um, but yeah, like just a, a totally new environment, a totally new, like everything. Maybe it's Borderlands, but in space. I don't know, right? Just something like crazy, right? Like that would be so cool. Just something totally to surprise us. Um, but that still has the same gearbox feel and. Comedy. The comedy and yeah, exactly. Oh, I would. Oh, I'm I'm so on board for that prediction. I would, love that. <laughs> I would absolutely love that. I think one way or the other, yeah, they're gonna show us whatever their next thing is is definitely happening at uh, you know this show. We're gonna see it this year. Um, I think it's probably not coming till 2019, maybe spring yeah. 2019, whatever it is. But holy crap, I would love if it was not Borderlands 3. I would I mean, also I would love, love if it was. Yeah, yeah. I would love it, but at the same time, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I would love Borderlands 3, but I would also be even even happier, I think, if it wasn't. Yeah, more actually, inclined to see something new. Yeah. yeah. I hadn't thought about that, but when you say it, I'm like, that that sounds really cool. Yeah, I was biting my tongue when you were talking about that earlier. I'm like, oh. yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's a good one. That's a really good one. Uh, all right. So time for curve my ball. crazy, wild curveball prediction. This will <laughs> never happen in a million years. Um, <laughs> my prediction is that EA doesn't spend half of their conference talking about sports. <laughs> <laughs> they, they come out on stage and they go, look, y'all buy FIFA and Madden every year, no matter what the hell we do. Um, <laughs> you guys in the room here, we know that you guys here on the show floor don't give a crap about, like, ab about this the, the, because it's all like the hardcore gaming industry people who aren't like, aren't the target crowd. Yeah. And they said, we'll, we'll release information about Madden and, and FIFA just <laughs> online. And uh, yeah, we'll we're not, we're not going to bring out a bunch of sports stars and uh, all that stuff on stage and have a really awkward interaction. We're just going to show you a bunch <laughs> of cool games. <laughs> if only. Just Anthem. The whole conference is just Anthem. That'd be cool. Yeah. Um, yeah. But you got, Never going to happen. You got to have a sports star playing Anthem. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Never going to happen, right? Like uh, those franchises make way too much money for them. And even though that the people that are in the room are not the target demographic, um, generally speaking, um, just that press conference has so many eyeballs that the stories are going to get written. The articles are going to, you know, are going to get read by the right people. So they're right. There will be plenty of that, but I would love if there wasn't. <laughs> All right, what's your curveball, man? All right, my curveball that I just thought of like two minutes ago is uh, my beloved Respawn Entertainment. Okay. I want them to ditch Titanfall. <gasps> Why? I love Titanfall. I, lo I love Titanfall, but I feel like EA, I'm talking to you, EA, is holding them back and they could do better. Because Battlefield 1 and Titanfall 2 should have mm -hmm. never been released two weeks apart from it. Actually, one week apart from each other. Yeah, never. That's true. Because I didn't even notice Titanfall 2 until three months after it came out, and the game was almost dead. Wow. Like, I, I want them to get rid of, I want them to ditch Titanfall. Like, it was, it was great. Don't get me wrong. The first one, yeah. I loved it. Granted, it was only a month of playtime because it got yeah. pretty repetitive. But the second one was amazing. Yeah. I want I want them to get rid of it now. Like I want them to use everything they learned from Titanfall and make something better. Yeah. You know? Like I trust me, I love Titanfall, but I want I want to see something new and hopefully not EA on top yeah. of it. Yeah, um I, I think they, they've already come out and said that like there will be more Titanfall. No. Um yeah. 
not not at this conference or, or whatever. Right, like right. you know, I just in the future. Like they're not killing. Just be, Titanfall Two was not a, um, I think a financial success for them. Um, I, I don't know that it lost money or anything, but I just don't think it was as big as they had anticipated it being, um, because they shot themselves in the foot by whatever freaking strategy they took. Yeah. Um, by doing Battlefield, and, yeah, and Titanfall right next to each other, right next to Call of Duty, it made no sense why they did that. Um, but they kind of came out and they reassured people that, hey, we know we screwed up, but this this is not the end of Titanfall. Um, that said, I would also love I I, I love Titanfall. I, I I personally think Titanfall One was actually better than Titanfall Two, or at least at launch, tight the launch version of Titanfall Two. Um, I, uh, although I did love the campaign of Titanfall 2. So yeah. I like the multiplayer of Titanfall 1 more, but I like the campaign because there was no campaign in Titanfall 1. <laughs> <laughs> hey, you all the missions, man. Come on. Yeah. Um, so, like, as much as I would be bummed to not have a Titanfall 3 that is, like, everything that I want it to, to be finally, um, you know, right now, I'd be okay with that. I'd be cool with them trying something new. That'd be That'd be awesome. I feel yeah. like it'd be a fresh start for them, you know. Yep. Just uh, put themselves on a better foot than when yeah. they left uh, Activision. Yeah. Or Infinity Ward. Yeah. Yeah, Infinity. Yeah, Infinity Ward. Right. Yeah. Um, all right. So that is it for our everything else E three twenty eight predictions. Let us know how we did. What do you think? Did are we are we totally off base? Did we <laughs> did we nail it? Are we are we going are we going six for six, or uh, I guess if you include the wild cards, eight for eight? Uh, and give us your predictions. We want to hear what you guys think. Uh, let us know all your thoughts in the comment section below. All right, everyone. So that's it for our uh, E three twenty eighteen wild and crazy, huge overstuffed predictions episode. Um, so just a, a little bit extra. We are going to be at E3 2018 um, in a little bit over a month from now. I'm super excited to be there. We're going to be doing a whole bunch of content. We're going to be playing all the games, um, you know, recording a bunch of footage and hopefully doing some live streams, all that kind of stuff from the show floor. Uh, so definitely stay tuned for that. And we'll get to find out how the heck we did with all of our predictions that I'm sure none of which are going to come <laughs> true. Um, but before we go, I just want to say uh, thank you so much to uh, Casper for joining me today. Um, it was great having you, man. Um, you want to maybe tell us, give us a little plug about yourself? Yeah, I mean, first off, thank you for having me. Uh, it was awesome. Had a lot of fun. Uh, but if you guys want to follow me on anything, uh, I got a Twitch. I stream every now and then. Uh, 026, Casper026. Uh, you can find me on there. You know, slide in the DMs, hit me up. And uh, yeah, thanks again, man. Yeah, um, and you guys should definitely do that. Uh, Casper is an awesome streamer. He does some really fun uh, DJ streams on Friday nights. Is that right? Yeah, Friday and Saturday, yeah, 7 Friday. p.m. Pacific Standard Time. Yeah, so you guys should yeah. definitely check him out on uh, on Twitch. Uh, listen to his fat beats, party along. Um, but yeah, man, thank you for being here. Uh, so that's it. That's 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 the end of our show. Um, guys, thank you so much for watching this episode of Game Tangent. Um, be sure to check us out uh, on Facebook, Twitter, YouTube, and Twitch, all using the handle uh, Game Tangent. Um, and uh, if you like hearing all about the latest gaming leaks, news, and rumors, then please subscribe to the channel. Uh, follow us on Twitter. We're always talking about all this kind of stuff. Um, every, I'm always kind of giving commentary, especially on Twitter, of just kind of every article that I read. Um, I, I love this stuff. And if you do too, then I hope you'll hang out and consider uh, joining the Game Tangent community. So uh, that's it for us today. My name is Chris Enriquez, aka Hyper Neon, and we'll see you next time. Peace! Hey everyone, thanks for watching Game Tangent. If you liked the video and you enjoyed the content and you want to see a little bit more, or if you're just like me and you're a super obsessed gaming nerd who likes to hear all about the latest gaming leaks, news, and rumors, then head on over to all our social media pages and follow us at Facebook, Twitter, YouTube, and Twitch, all using the handle at Game Tangent. And if you want to see more videos like this, you can try clicking on this one right up here, or you can subscribe right down here and find out when we're doing more stuff. I hope you do. See you next time, everyone.